Okay, so here we are in our percent supply in profit and loss. And as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking at things from the perspective of long and short-term holders, as well as the aggregate market. So there's a whole suite of tools here, and we're gonna to start to build up a bit of a story. Again, we're going for that incentive to sell. What is the incentive? And more importantly, actually, when markets go through corrections or rallies, think about a large price change. We move from one range to another. These metrics are really powerful for looking at how has the overall cost basis, positioning of the market changed? Are more people in profit? Did we see a large amount of coins get reaccumulated in that zone? And now that price is above, they've gone from in loss to in profit, which improves the overall uh, profitability of the system. These are the kind of questions we're gonna be answering. Now, as usual, we're looking at long-term holders in blue and short-term holders in red. And we're gonna really build this up from top to bottom, starting with the overall market and then diving into the short and long-term holders individually. So what we're looking at here is the long-term holder supply in blue and short-term holder in red. We've covered this many times, so I won't stick on this for too long. I think just to really set the scene, long-term holder supply is coming off its November or December all-time high, about just under 15 million coins. I think it was up to about 80% of the circulating supply. It has pulled back meaningfully. We're down about 14.83 million BTC. Now, a lot of those coins are coming out of GBTC. So those coins have been dormant for a very long time. Those coins are moving from one ETF to another, essentially. But of course, that's not the whole story. There is also existing holders who are taking profits. And we're going to touch on that in just a second. So just to put things in a macro context, we are only just lifting off short-term holder supplies, only just lifting off the bottom. You can see that during full-scale raging bull markets, these really start to diverge and climb in the short-term holder sense because old hands transfer their coins to new hands. So this is an influx of new demand, but new people, in many cases, buying the top. We are some distance away from that. Now, of course, if the market really does fail and continue to trade lower, that's really telling you that you only need this much supply to really put some damage on the market. So it tells you something about the influx of demand. Is it actually strong enough to keep the price moving? 